Will we have an opening on behalf of the defense? Yes, Judge. All right, please proceed. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, let me just say this because I have to sort of focus when things become weird. Everything about the case is weird. The evidence is weird. The indictment is weird. The prosecutor telling you that he intends to impeach Dr. Terry, who wrote manner of death undetermined. The, the medical examiner has already submitted a report within 24 hours of the death saying, I can't tell if it's a suicide or a homicide. So the prosecutor getting up here saying, well, she can't tell, but she really can tell. That's weird to me. My client's response and reaction to the suicide there in Yellow River Park is totally weird. The whole case is just weird. Everything about the case is weird to me. So I'm going to have to really use a lot of energy to focus because I really don't do weird. Being a lawyer and following facts. Weird and I really don't go together. So we have to go to the indictment. My client has pled not guilty to each and every count in the indictment. Count one is felony murder. My, char my client is charged with felony murder for an aggravated assault saying he shot. He shot. That's what it says in count one. We move to count two, which is the aggravated assault, which is the felony underlying the felony murder. And it reads by pointing said firearm. It doesn't matter how long you point a firearm, you can't cause any felony murder by pointing. But then the prosecutor just explained it to me. Count one is felony murder shooting, but if you don't like that he shot, when Tori laid down, my client may have helped Tori point the gun at herself when she pulled the trigger. What? So count two, words matter, words matter. So count two reads that he committed an aggravated assault by pointing a firearm. So she shot herself, but he helped steer the gun after she laid down. I don't think Dr. Terry's going to say that, but let's assume for a moment Dr. Terry said that she laid down and shot herself. Then count three is not guilty because it reads causes the death as a result of a sudden violent or irresistible passion resulting from serious provocation. Tory laid down and he helped point the gun at her. So there's no, there's no voluntary manslaughter. That's when you come home and your wife is in bed or your husband's in bed with somebody else and you said, I'll fix you and you pull a gun and start firing. He just told you she laid down and my client either shot her or helped steer the gun to, to shoot her. So she can't provocate. So what's the provocation there? There will be absolutely no evidence that these two very good friends at any point in time ever had any argument that would amount to any of the language in count three. The whole thing is weird. There's no text messages, there's no voicemail, there's no anything that would indicate that my client was angry at her or she was angry at him. They were friends. When, when, when you see her walk up on the ring camera to his door before she shoots herself, when they walk out, when he walks back, there's no indication that they at any time were mad or had a fight. There's nobody that heard any yelling before the gunshot. You're not going to hear anything about that. That's just pie in the sky foolishness to try to explain the weirdness. You're never going to be able to explain weird. That's why I picked the law rather than a different field, because I can't stand weird. So we get to counts four and five. Counts four and five are possession of a firearm. The prosecutor's already told you there's no evidence that there's two firearms, and the prosecutor believes that the two shell casings that were found belong to the same gun, and they think it belongs to Tory's mother's gun. So when my client, when you see that my client is charged in count six with taking a gun, he means taking a gun from the scene. My client was never at Tori's house stealing any gun. Tori came to the park with her mother's gun. So count six, count six unlawfully taking a gun is taking the gun that Tori used to shoot herself away from the scene. That's what that is. Tori's, that's what they, that's what they believe the gun is. Tori's mother's gun. I don't know that they know that, but we all know that there's no gun there. Two rounds, we think they're the same, we think is Tory's mother's gun that only Tory had access to because my client not charged with burglary because he didn't break into anybody's house and he didn't sneak in anybody's bedroom and take any gun. 
when he was at Tory's house. That never happened. So the theft is removing the gun from the scene. Count seven is unlawfully left with the car. Six and seven are basically just enhancement of count eight, tampering with evidence. And the only reason they know that, that my client, you can just say guilty of count eight now. You can write down guilty of count eight. The only reason they know that is because my client told them that. That's the only thing they know in the case. They know she's dead, they know she has a gunshot wound to the head, and they know that he was there because he told the police, I was there, she shot herself, and I took the gun and the, and the, and the, and the car and left. He, didn't, he doesn't even say he burnt up the car. The car is burnt up some mile and a half or two miles away as the crow flies. They don't even know when the car was burnt up. The whole thing is weird. Why didn't he, why didn't he call the police? after she shot herself, why didn't he stay there? Well, he says he was nervous. He says he was nervous. Well, do you believe he was nervous? I, I'm just not that guy. I personally don't get nervous when I see the police. I understand other people get nervous. As Soon as the blue lights come on on the highway, I know it's for me because I'm a speeder and I pull right over. I don't have a problem, but he explains to the police, listen, the optics didn't look good. I'm a black man, she's black, yes, but she's light-skinned, I'm dark-skinned. The optics just doesn't look good. It just doesn't look good. So, no, this is what I did. He explains it to the police. So the whole thing is weird. So we have to try to go through the actual facts. Opening statement is where we're, gonna, is where we're supposed to outline for you the evidence that you think uh, that we expected you to see during the course of the trial. What you're going to see is you're going to see a rain camera, and you're going to see a rain camera that belongs to somebody who, who may or may not be here. I won't have a whole bunch of questions for the people with the rain camera. Well, Mr. Lewis, you said it was rain, but it was really ghost. Listen, let's stop playing games. Whatever surveillance you see, I'm going to call it ring. I don't care if it's called ghost uh, uh, or, or, or vivid or whatever it is. Let's, got, let's not get bogged down in foolishness. Someone has a surveillance camera, and that camera is going to catch Tory coming over to my client's apartment about 10:30 at night on July 27, 2021. It's going to have my client coming back to his apartment without Tory somewhere around 12:30 in the morning uh, on July 28, 2021. So, although the indictment says July 27, 2021, you're never going to hear me stand up here and say, hey, it says July 27th, but, but they can't prove that she, that's foolishness. Somebody's dead, and we need to get at it. July 27, 2021, July, into the morning of July 28, 2021, Tori was shot. Her body is located at about 6.35 a.m. by a passerby, and we know that because they call 911, and 911 responds on July 28th uh, at 6.30 in the morning. The Emmy doesn't autopsy. There's one bullet in Tory, two rounds. I don't know where the second bullet is. I don't know if there was a second bullet fired there or if there was just an extra casing. I don't know. I don't have the answer to that. That's weird, but that's not super weird. Two rounds, she struck one time, and the medical examiner, Dr. Terry, who will tell you she's done like 6,000 autopsies. She's not brand new. Nobody here is new. Nobody, nobody here, oh, okay, maybe Fallon Stimson is new. Prosecutor doesn't look new. All his hair's gone, all my hair is gone, and Dr. Terry's gonna tell you she's got 6,000 autopsies. Nobody's new. And she's going to tell you, based on her expertise, she cannot tell if it's a suicide or a homicide. She doesn't know uh, Austin Ford, but she's going to tell you, science cannot tell me if it was a suicide or a homicide. She's not going to tell you, science tells me it's 10% suicide and 90% homicide. Please do not wait for that. Dr. T Dr. Terry is a person after my own heart. She doesn't suffer fools lightly. <laughs> And if you say something foolish like undetermined means, you're going to hear it from Dr. Terry. She does not suffer fools lightly with 6,000 autopsies. She's going to tell you she cannot determine if it's a homicide or a suicide. That's the end of that with Dr. Terry. The vehicle is found about four days after the body is found burnt up. We don't know who burnt it up. We don't know even know when it was burnt up. When the, when the vehicle is found, it's not burning. So we know it doesn't get burned within two hours of the discovery because I don't think it's warm to the touch. I think it's sort of just burnt and burnt out and they, they find the shell of a, of a vehicle. And we can look at as many photos as you want 
In the indictment, is my client charged with burning up a vehicle? No, because they don't know that he burnt up a vehicle. The whole, the whole theft of a vehicle and theft of firearm, that's just all a big distraction. He moved the vehicle and he moved the firearm. I don't know what the conversation was between him and his best friend. Uh, pretend that it's not a suicide. I don't want my family to know it's a suicide. I don't know what the conversation was. He doesn't get that far into the conversation with the detectives when they speak to him. And the detectives speak to my client on March 29, 2022, eight months later. They have an actual face-to-face -face conversation. Do I think my client is dodging uh, the law enforcement in between the time of the shooting and the time that they speak to him? Absolutely. I absolutely pretend, I absolutely believe he's dodging the, 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 the police, dodging law enforcement. The same way people who know they do a 95 and a 55 say, why'd you pull, you know why I pulled you over? I don't know why you pulled me over. Really do, really? You don't know why we pulled you over? I don't know why you pulled me over, officer. He's dodging the police. They finally catch up to him at the Clayton County Jail because he's there on some unrelated gun offense. And they sit down and they talk to him and he says, listen, I was there at Yellow River and my friend killed herself. And I removed the gun and I removed the car. And that's how they know that he removed the gun and he removed the car because he told them. Two weeks after the conversation, which is eight months after the actual body is discovered and the autopsy is done, two weeks after they speak to Austin Ford, the lead investigator takes a warrant for felony murder. They don't have any more information after they speak to Austin Ford than they had <clears throat> after Dr. Terry presented her report. No, no, nothing, nothing to distinguish suicide from homicide, nothing. And so as you sit here and you listen to this evidence over the next three, three and a half days, maybe to you by Friday, it may not be to you as a jury for you to deliberate till Monday. As you sit here and you listen to this evidence, the evidence needs to answer three questions. Question number one, what happened? I'm not really even used to that. <laughs> Look, normally when I come to court and my client is charged with something, I know what happened. They say it's a burglary and something got burglarized. Somebody got shot, somebody says they got raped. I understand what happened. I don't even know what happened here. I don't even know what happened. The prosecutor giving you three theories. He could have shot her, could have shot her, he could have helped her steer the gun, shot her, he could have, he could have, he could have just watched her shoot herself. That was all of idea and done nothing. Well, well, which is it? Now, I'm going to let you decide. So first thing you have to decide on the evidence that you see, first thing you have to decide is what happened. Was it a suicide or a homicide? Did Tori kill herself or did Austin Ford kill her? Because you don't have, you're not pointing in any other directions with any other suspect. First question that the evidence needs to answer is what happened. Then the second question is who was present? Who was present? If Austin Ford doesn't tell you he's present, there's no evidence that he's ultimately present. And you're going to hear from him through his, his recording. I don't know if he's going to testify or not. He has a right to testify. He has a right not to testify. The judge is going to tell you that. But it's clear the gun was removed from the park and her vehicle was removed from the park and the evidence shows that she was shot at the park. I don't know that the evidence is going to show if she was standing up on her knees, laying down, head turned. I'm not willing to go that far. Maybe you think the evidence is going to show that or maybe the prosecutors live with the evidence long enough that he can make that inference. I, I'm, I'm just comfortable saying she was shot at the park versus shot someplace else and brought to the park. But you're going to have to determine who was present in the park when the gun and or the vehicle was removed. The evidence is going to have to ultimately tell you that information. And then I could tell you, the evidence is going to be clear that Austin Ford is lying. Why is Austin Ford lying? I've been doing enough jury trials that I trust that juries aren't going to be finding people guilty of felony murder because they, they lie into the police. I don't know why he told the police what he did. I don't know why he told the police he was there. I don't know why he told the police beforehand that he wasn't there. I don't know. 
I don't know, but you will get to you will get to review all of his statements. He's dodging the police. So the first three calls on the phone, you can just put down dodger. He's dodging the police. When they catch up with him, he's already in custody. They read him his rights and he gives a voluntary statement. He voluntarily gives a statement and he explains ultimately what happened. He doesn't have Dr. Terry's report at that time. Austin Ford doesn't have Dr. Terry's report saying that it is potentially a suicide. He doesn't say, oh, we went to the park and there was a third figure that came up and shot me, and uh, shot her and, and said that they were gonna shoot me or shot her and then shot at me. That explains the second round. No, he's not doing that. He's not doing that. Dr. Terry says it's undetermined suicide, homicide. He then tells the detective eight months after that autopsy, which he's never seen, it was a suicide. How in the world did he get that right? So he explains that ultimately to the police. I, I, why'd you take the gun and throw it in the water? Why, why'd you move the car anyplace else? That's all weird. That's just weird. And, and I think that's what the prosecutor's hoping. He's hoping that you will convict Austin Ford on the weirdness of this whole case. Everything is weird. So I'm gonna use half of my energy not to be weird as the case is weird. I'm gonna try to stay focused on the evidence so that it comes to you so that you can use your cognitive abilities in evaluating the evidence and not fall into the abyss of, this is just weird. It's all, it's all weird. At the end, you're gonna see there's no way you can find him guilty of everything because in order to find him guilty of everything, you gotta find him guilty of multiple theories. You gotta find, find that he shot and he helped Tori by, 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 by helping her by pointing, which is the felony murder, and he had to be mad when she laid down for some reason. So that's impossible. You, it's impossible for you to find him guilty of all the charges. And what you're gonna see through the weirdness of the case is that the state hasn't proven anything to you, which is why the only verdict in the case is going to be not guilty on all the charges. Thank you very much, Judge. All right, thank you, Lawrence Lewis, for the defense.